What's up, Holly? 714. What's good? What's up, everyone? Yo, what's up? Yo. Me? Yep. This is working. How you guys doing tonight? How's everyone doing? Pretty good. How are you? Think playing? Watching the uh watching the cup race, Richmond right now. They started out on wet tires. Well it was raining? Yeah, it was raining and they started the race off on um the the, the track was damp, you know, in the drying process. They started out on on rain tires now they just switched to slicks they never they never ran rain tires on a on an oval before yeah it's pretty interesting was the bristol race that you went to recently what's up rick what's going on man how are you pretty good how are you what's up you bad man Hey, what's up? What's up, Holly? What's up? How you doing, Holly? Good. How about you, Rob? Pretty good. Pretty good. Excited to be on here with you guys tonight. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. So, um, How's everybody's thanks, Easter? Yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Not bad. Um, we have Rick and Holly here from Spec Panther, and we have Homer as well. Uh, thank you guys for joining the live tonight. Sure, man. No problem. Pretty exciting stuff that's going on here with Spec Panther. So, I guess to start, um, do you want to tell us about how Spec Panther got started and what it's about, really, for people that may be unsure? Sure, man. So, probably seven years ago, uh, the owner of Auto Interest, Jason Kennedy, had a uh, old Crown Vic, and we used to rally cross it and have a bunch of fun with it and just do stupid stuff with it and a couple of years i don't know maybe two years of doing that we were all kind of sitting around um i'm the chief instructor for the organization auto interest and we do car events at road courses um and we teach people how to to race cars or drive safely on a racetrack and uh, teach them different skills on how to control their car so as the instructors, you know, we all have fast cars, race cars, expensive cars to maintain or fix if you blow an engine or tires or anything is just so expensive. And we we're sitting around and saying, you know, we, we need to do something fun and less expensive than bringing, you know, race cars to the track. And um, we kind of were joking around, like, we should just get, you know, Crown Vix or something. Let's let's get something. And I kind of discussed with everybody, like, the criteria needs to be rear wheel drive needs to be plentiful, they need to be cheap, and they need to be faster than a Miata, because I'm not driving a Miata around. <laughs> so, so we kind of thought about doing, you know, the, the, obviously the Panthers were in our, you know, kind of, we played with them, had fun with them. We thought about it first doing like a Panther versus the Caprice, like the other cop car, the Chevy cop car, and just having like a, you know, whatever, races between those two cars, and we weren't sure which one was going to be faster we weren't sure which one was going to be you know uh the, the best choice and we knew whatever were the fastest cars everybody would just gravitate towards it anyways so we decided that the panther was a better platform more plentiful you know it was just easier to get your hands on and uh so that's what we kind of started we we kind of talked about it one weekend and the next weekend i think like five different people showed up with panthers and wow. You know, we all had a blast and just kind of spun the series off, wrote some rules, and uh, have been having a blast ever since. That's awesome. That sounds really cool. And you guys have some, some sponsors, right? Some big guys, some big names sponsoring you guys uh, coming into the season. Go ahead, Holly. Yeah, so um, we, we have sponsorship through Summit Racing Equipment. 
Um, we have sponsorship through Hawk uh, brake pads this season. Um, and they've been a, an ongoing sponsor for a, a few seasons now. Um, this year, we kind of decided we wanted to make the series grow. So, um, you know, we, we really haven't pushed a whole lot of social media. We haven't pushed a whole lot of, of getting the name out there. And this season, we kind of Rick and I sat down and decided that, hey, we, you know, we'd like to see the series grow. And you know, if we can get a, you know, by the end of the season, we're, we're hoping to have maybe 20 teams. Right now, we've got 12 teams signed up. Uh, um, if we can get you know upwards of twenty teams, we're we're open to maybe next season opening an unlimited class, to where you know guys that that are building those Panthers with maybe LS motors or superchargers or want to do some some suspension modifications, they can maybe join in next season. But for right now, we're we're trying to kind of get the word out there. We've got a uh, uh, in the works, we've, we're going to be doing a YouTube channel uh, with six, basically like television episodes. Um, got some friends that are out on the West Coast to work for a couple of uh, movie theaters or, or movie production companies that uh, are, are going to help us with editing and so forth. So we're, we're definitely excited for this season. Yeah, we thought it was time to share the fun. We've been having all this fun by ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so, we really so have. Time, time to spread the word. I mean, we laugh so much in these things. The first couple of seasons we were doing this, I mean, it was just a – I mean, it was so much fun. I mean, we were just laughing the whole time and and just giving so many – I I bet my Panther if I had 200 people go for rides with me in it. I mean, it's crazy how much people gravitate towards these things when they see – really what they're capable of. I mean, some people are like, oh, these cars are cool and whatever. But like when you sit in one and, and see what they can really do, it's it's eye opening. It's like a whole different thing. It's like a whole different mm -hmm. world. Like, like to give you a good example. So when I met Rick, you know, it was Corvette, Corvette, Corvette. And um, Rick had done a couple of, uh, well, a couple of seasons with uh, Optimus search for the ultimate streetcar which is a televised event and uh i kind of went down that road and bought a corvette and did a couple of optima events and had an absolute blast with doing it and and he talked me into uh you know hey you gotta buy a crown vic so i did and man i got hooked i sold the corvette <laughs> the, the is so much more fun to be able to throw around and it's unbelievable how well they handle so you know there's a good example of you can go from you know a corvette to a crown vic and have more fun in a crown vic you really can you, they are more fun i have like holly said i've got some corvette stuff i've done a bunch of corvette things and set a bunch of records with my corvettes and I got some land speed records at over 200 miles an hour and the crown Vic is by far more fun. You know, the, the vets are faster, but the crown Vics are way more fun. I can agree. I can agree with that, that these cars are, I need Oh three and up, of course, as you know, when it comes to the handling, there's, there's, mm -hmm. there's, 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 there's not much out there that can come close for the, for the money. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you, you have, you have a well handling car, but you also have a heavy car. Mm -hmm. So you have a car that has body roll and weight transfer and playing with playing with with all the weight ma is what makes it fun. It, yeah. Oh, the maintenance absolutely. too. The we don't. I don't ever maintain mine. I just stick it in the trailer, pull it back out of the trailer to track, put it back in the trailer at the end of the weekend, pull it back out the next weekend. That's the best. Thing I never maintain it. Cars. My Corvette was every time I come back from a race every weekend, I'd have to spend you know hours going through it, nut and bolt, change this, look at that check this out, buy another set of tires. It was crazy. I was spending so much time and money on these things. Crown Vic doesn't ever do anything. I, I wash it once a year, change the oil once a year, bleed the brakes maybe twice a year, and go. Go beat, beat the snot out of it mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
That's what Rob does in his DMRC currently. <laughs> I drive. I, I drive it all over the country. I I love taking it up on. I run the Blue Ridge Parkway with it the whole length. I'll run the 500 miles one way, the 500 miles back, and mm -hmm. I'm up there. There's there's times I'm doing some pretty illegal speeds, <laughs> but you know. I'll get up there at six o'clock in the morning when there's nobody, and I'll run a hundred miles of the road at at a pretty fast pace, mm -hmm. almost triple the speed limit, and then, then then calm down for a little bit because there's there's no room for error on a on a country road like that. But that's why I'm so excited to get on the racetrack yep. and be able to push the car in a controlled environment, not to worry about other vehicles coming, you know, oncoming traffic. Yep. I just to I go used... off of. Go ahead. Oh, I, I was going to say, I used to do a bunch of stuff on the streets. And once I found the racetrack, I just, I never did. Cause you can do anything. You can do so much stuff on the racetrack in a controlled, safe environment. And I just, I never, people think I'm a grandma when I'm driving on the road now. Like I don't do anything on the road, roads anymore. Cause I'm always at the racetrack. Yep. And you get it all like, out of your system on the track and that's the outlet. Yep. Yep. And you're allowed to do, we'll say dumb stuff at the racetrack like you can there's we have a thing called car control um that you guys will see at mid ohio that i mean we it, we want people to do burnouts and drifting and spin and lose control because they'll learn from that we Absolutely. don't want them just to do donuts for no reason and just make smoke shows we want them to go as fast as they can into a controlled corner and when they spin out correct it and go okay what do you think you could have done to save the car oh maybe if i try this we'll go try that did that work? No, not quite, but it was better. Okay, go try this. And then pretty soon you can see them have starting to master these these little drills that we do and these things. So when they're on the racetrack, if something comes up and they start to lose control, they can save it. Pretty cool. So you guys also have like a, a connection to spec P71, correct? So originally we announced these rules, I think it was like five years ago. And uh, he called me up and was like, hey, I've been wanting to do this forever. And you guys just gave me the inspiration to do it. Would you share some, like your rule set? Like, would you guys share some stuff? I'm like, absolutely. Like, go, go knock yourself out. Go have fun. We're on the East Coast. You're on the West Coast. At the time, I used to spend quite a bit of time on the West Coast. Um, and and uh, we kind of just talked a little bit and off, off they go. Off and running they go. Some. Someday maybe we'll meet in the middle of America and have the fastest showdown or something, but it's a long way to go halfway across the U.S. for each of us. That would be crazy. Yep. I think we be spoke fun. about that. I think Oklahoma yeah. would be like the midpoint of the United States. Yeah. That's just a long track, man. Yeah. Um, so, so, what would it take for, for someone to become a racist for people that are so I know you guys offer um, instruction classes as well. So. so Auto Interest is a high performance driver education company. And basically anybody that wants to sign up can go to autointerest.com, sign up as a first timer, come out. Um, we tech your car to make sure that everything is safe on the car. And we put an instructor in that passenger seat with you at, at any track that we go to and teach you the dynamics of what the car does, where your braking zones are, how to be able to, to run the, the race line of the track. It's a very controlled and safe environment, um, even though you're doing high speeds and you learn about your car as well as how to drive it at high speeds. So anybody can actually sign up to be able to do this again all you have to do is go to autointerests.com and look at the events typically we have a lot of events in ohio pittsburgh um, we do have an upcoming event in april or i'm sorry in may um, at gingerman which is up in michigan um, but yeah i mean anybody can can jump in and do this and once you start running through the ranks and you sign up you do a few of these track day events we have different uh different classes so you've got first time you have novice intermediate and advanced and as you work into intermediate and advanced for the guys out there with the panther platforms 
we'll look at you uh, as far as being able to kind of join Spec Panther um, and running in the 2025 season. Yeah. Which, which brings me to one question for you, because I, I myself, I went and I signed up to do that event. The um, at Mid Ohio. At Mid Ohio, but the website said something about there that that you weren't able to sign up under new drivers. So I had a I had to sign up under intermediate. There was there was no option to sign up under new driver or novice. The first level was intermediate. Mm -hmm. So I signed up under the intermediate class. So it. Pro Probably it shouldn't let you do that. Um, it should default you to a, a novice category, and then you have to send in a request to get bumped up. Um, did you did you happen to, to fill out like any form or anything on the on the website to ask for approval to go to intermediate, or did it automatically it, put you in there? It automatically let me do it. I made an uh, account, and it automatically um, was, it, there was no it, it should, no option for a novice shouldn't do that that means novice is sold out um but what we do sometimes for the panther uh crowd is we'll like create slots so basically we try to get a, a one to one or one to two relationship with the instructors so instructors don't have 20 people they're responsible for it's one on one or one on two at the max and uh so we, we can look, look at that and, and get that done um but everybody should sign up for if they have any road course experience it doesn't matter how good of a driver you are on the street or you know i've done some stuff you, you gotta racetracks are totally different there's different rules there's flags there's corner workers there's all kinds of things that yeah. take yeah. take you some time to like just learn we have a classroom there's a, a classroom i've done a lot of along the karting in my days previously yeah. so I've, I, I have a lot of track experience in the in the carts i've done shifter carts I, years ago i used to do a lot of kart racing cool yep so it's a very similar skill set and uh so basically, you know, when somebody signs up, in your case, it's a little different. I'm not sure what happened there, but in most cases, it'll be a novice type format. If somebody comes to us from a, you know, a different organization, like, hey, I've you know been doing this for two, three years, they just they kind of submit like a small resume, like, hey, I've done this. Here's my track days. Here's the groups I've run with, and then uh, we sign off and, and move them up. Uh, but uh, but everybody kind of starts out in the same place, and and. You know, we work them up and get them as fast as we can, uh, you know, just safely. Our, our biggest thing is, you know, let's be safe, let's have fun, and let's get you up to speed and, and go. Um, one of the biggest mistakes we see people make is, you know, they're, they're working on their car, making their car better. I'm going to get this sway bar and these wheels and tires and all this stuff that you don't need. You need seat time. Really, that's what makes people faster is more seat time. They don't need the latest and greatest, and they don't need – you know, all the stuff on their car. They just need to show up. I mean, Spec Panther is that. Yeah. It's just they're mostly stock. And, you know, well, people will find out how fast they a are. A great example is we have quite a few new teams for the 2024 season. And we actually have online meetings with all of our teams. And, and I know I've talked to a couple of these teams and they're like, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up with you guys. Trust me, we're we're all about sharing that information and making everybody faster. That's what makes the series so fun mm -hmm. is that, you know, the, the, some of the slower guys, we teach them how to become faster and faster. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we all basically have data acquisition uh, devices in our vehicles. I have an apex pro. I think Rick's got an apex pro. Um, that will give you some telemetries as far as your G-forces, how far you can actually push that car in a corner. Those are the, that's the kind of information that we're going to share with other guys when we get in that car and they're a little unsure that they can go into that corner. We can actually share that data with them and, and prove to them that, yeah, you can, you can go faster. So any mm -hmm. place where, where we can help another team out, we all want to come down. I think our last event last year, it was all within like three tenths of a second. Um, Cause the, the racing series is time trial based. We're not doing wheel to wheel racing. This is how fast can you get around that track? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, lap, lap time uh, when, based. yeah, when you start really uh, getting down to where you're, you know, three tenths of a second from first, second, third, you know, these guys are running pretty hard.
You're pretty much racing yourself, which. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're racing yourself. Every time you go, you're just trying to improve that lap time, a tenth, uh, thousands to a tenth at a time. And yep. sure. keep, That's keep it. confidence in the car and each, just keep driving the car deeper, deeper into the corner. And until you find that limit, then you just back off a little bit. Yep. The yeah. best, the best thing people can do is just listen, be open-minded and listen. Absolutely. You know, we, we, I've got thousands of laps and, and, you know, I have a lot of information to share with people that are willing to listen and the people that are open and man, I don't know if that, you know, I don't know if that feels right. Or I don't know. I've been doing this or my friend said this, like if they just plug in and listen and just do what we say and kind of, you know, trust the instructor that they're, you know, we're going to have their best interest at, at heart. Uh, they're, they're going to have a great day. They're going to go faster. They're going to have fun. They're going to be safe. Their car's going to go home in the same condition that came in and there'll be no, no excitement. No, no off track experiences, no carnage. Everybody's just gonna have a great day. Oh, uh, Rob, did you have any more questions for them about um, what, um, anything in regards to the racing or? Um, just, you know, just in general, if there's anything that, you know, that I need to know or, you know, be, being that I, I signed up for a different class, I'm sure we can, we could probably settle yeah. that, you know. Yeah, we'll get that figured yeah. out. We'll, we'll get no that figured deal. out. Rob, what? But, um, what uh, modifications do you have to your car at this point? So the car has the works from ADTR. It's got the Ride Tech coilovers, the front and rear sway bar, Watts Link with the stud, rear control arms, upper and lower, the 14-inch um, six-piston Willwood brakes up front, back the stop stop tech brakes with Hulk pads, um, 275 4018s all around. Um, summer summer compound. I just ordered a brand new set of Yokohamas. Um, the tire I've been running for the past three years, so I I don't have to go out and learn a new tire. <laughs> I know the tire, which is it puts me you know it gives, it gives me a little bit of advantage. I don't have to go drive sure. a new tire. Sure. And um, that's that's pretty much it. Stock stock power, stock horsepower, stock transmission. Cool. It's very well very well maintained. Sounds yeah, fun. A lot of fun at Mid Ohio. It's a it's a pretty technical track, but you know, with yeah. those modifications to the car, it should do very, very well. I've been watching, uh, in, you know, a lot of in-car video of the track, trying to learn the flow, the, the line, and I know they just repaved it, so we'll be some of the first to get to drive on that new repave. We all yeah, are the first run group to actually. I think the only other run group that's been on the tracks uh, has been State Highway Patrol for Ohio. Um, they've been there the past couple of weeks actually running, but I think we are the first run group to actually be able to run mid Ohio with this new nice. pavement. Nice. Yep. That, that'll be an experience. Oh yeah, for sure. For all of us, no, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's not, not often you get to run on a brand new, freshly paved track. No, not at all. You know, so my great. first experience at mid Ohio in 2018, uh, was a wet day and mid ohio was one of those tracks that you don't want to really take your car out when it's wet because it's, it's fat, like driving yes. on the feet up yeah. the actual race line is the opposite of what you would run uh normally for race line so um coming out of the carousel onto the straightaway and i went into a four tire slide doing maybe 30 mile an hour mm -hmm. and i learned my lesson then that if it was slightly damp or wet don't go on mid ohio so with this new pavement i'm really curious to see if the track's going to be like that this year it'll be way way yeah. different I, yeah. I almost guarantee um it'll be way 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 different because it's so polished the problem is i think it was 14 years or something since the last repave of that course and where the fast line is where everybody drives it just gets polished. I mean, you got to yes. figure just tires running over and over and over and over and, and then, tens and thousands, hundreds the of thousands. The opposite line is more toothy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not as polished, yeah. It's funny, yeah, so, you must have been watching the same broadcast that I was with the NASCAR race because they were, they were talking about that, that, you know, some of these guys with the race. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, the, yep, the, the bottom the line. track mm -hmm. is, is polished, yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm, I have the race on right now in the back. Yeah, we are safe from here. <laughs> so, so, isn't there a certain modification the car has to have for it to be on the track as spec painter? Like certain tires, uh, certain parts have to be stocked, right? 
So for this season, we do not have a specific um, brand of tire or quote unquote spec tire. Um, it has to be a 200 tread wear tire. Um, it can be no wider than 275. Um, of course, you want to have good brakes on the car. And to be honest with you, for, for guys that are thinking about getting into this, AutoZone brake pads are not what you need. You're going to need no. some sort of, and, and Hawk makes the best pads when it comes to that stuff. So, you know, you want to get yourself a good set of Hawk brake pads. As far as other modifications, unfortunately, like if Rob came to us and said, hey, you know, I want to run my Panther in Spec Panther, because he has the coilovers and other modifications on the car, technically that does not fit into the rules. Um, we want these cars to be, again, it was designed to be as inexpensive as possible. And honestly, we want to see who the best drivers really are, you know. Yep. Um, if you start changing and modifying the car, you know, well, yeah, anybody can probably get a car to run a little bit better with, with better modifications. So um, yep. that's why we've kept everything really simple on the tires, the brakes, um, and, and other modifications. We really don't want to see those in Spec Panther. Today. Hey, as Spec Panther, this unlimited is where we're talking that's totally about totally different. Yeah. Limited series, that's yeah. We just right. cool. need enough people. The problem is we don't want to take the. I think we have twenty four drivers total right now. We don't want to take the twenty four drivers we have today or the twelve teams and uh, you know fracture them. So six guys go in unlimited and six guys stay in Spec Panther. It's not really what we're after. Yeah. Let's get you know let's get twelve of the twenty guys in Spec. And then we'll have, you know, five or 10 go to unlimited or whatever it becomes, you know, in the following years. But we need to make sure that spec, the cheaper version of it, is the one that lives on for sure. And then we can go build some unlimited stuff because I'm itching, dying for it. I want it so bad. Yeah, we've, we've all been talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> we just need more people. So, so if we can get enough, you know panther people out there to support what we do and have fun and want to have fun and learn and, and you know just get on the racetrack and have a great experience you know we can do all kinds of cool stuff it's a, the great equalizer you want to you want to try to keep it keep it keep it up to the driver mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. keep it because mm -hmm. you, know, you can you can have a, 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 a you know a, a driver that's not nearly as good as one driver i've run similar lap times almost beat a driver that's that, that's in a stock car versus a, a car that has, you know, wider tires or sure. different suspension. You because you it eliminate almost all the body roll. Even like the Willwood brakes I put on my car, yeah, unbelievable. One of the best upgrades ever. Mm -hmm. yep. That that mushy brake pedal feel the Panthers are known for. That sponginess is mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. Yep. You I'll uh, you'll see when you when you guys come out track and whoever ends up coming out to to you know, visit the track, be part of the Panther car show, you know, experience what we do, go for rides. You'll see that it's, it's really about the experience. I mean, you'll see all kinds of really cool cars, but if they're in the novice group, I'm going to lap that whole group. It doesn't matter what's in there. Corvettes, Ferrari, Porsche, Mustangs. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're 600, 700 horsepower cars. They, they don't have the driver behind it. And we're, we're just going to, we're going to lap them with our stock Panthers. <laughs> But that's the thing. Eventually, they're going to get fast. Eventually, we're going to teach them how to go fast and use all that horsepower and use those cars. But when they first show up, they, they don't know what to do yet. So there'll be multiple cars on the track, and you, you pass by point by, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. It's the safest way to learn. Uh, in, the, in the more advanced groups, <clears throat> there's a little more open passing rules, and, and it's, it's more free because – You've got, you know, tons of time on the track and you trust everybody and you know what's going on. But for yeah. novices, you don't know if the guy's, you know, first time on track and he's focused forward and he doesn't realize you're behind him going faster. And he's so nervous about doing, you know, the thing right that if you just went to pass him and he gets, oh, wait, there's somebody behind me. Let me get out of his way and, and he, take he you out. So we prevent in your way. Yeah, we prevent all that, which is a point by it's a simple you know, gesture. It's just, you know, Hey, I see you there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pass me. It's yeah, almost like a blinker on a street. Yeah. It's just a communication between, you know, race drivers 
much like you'd use your blinker on the street. Unless you're a BMW guy, then you don't have blinkers on the street. But. <laughs> so how, long, how long does the instruction give you? Like, when people ride with you to learn how to really get behind the wheel on the track, how long is that usually? So per event, you're going to have about, I think it's like two hours of track time total. Uh, I think it's maybe five sessions. Uh, then we go out, plus the classroom, plus the drills at certain tracks. And it's really up to the person, how fast do they adapt? So they're going to get a ton of track time. So by the time they leave, they're just, they're tired. They're like, wow, I learned so much information today. You know, your mind's going, your body's going, everything's, you know, you're just absorbing all of this information. And there's so much information to absorb. So if you do an event or two of those, you start to get the hang of it. But something that your instructor might've said on day one might click in on like day three. Like, oh, that's what he was telling me to do. He's telling me to do the brakes this way or telling me to use my hands and turn in on, you know, this way because they'll feel it. You know, we might say it and, and, you know, here's what to do and here's how to do it better. But it might take somebody a few times at the track to, to start getting the hang of it. Um, so everybody learns at a different pace. We have some people that excel in the first couple track days and they jump up to a novice solo or an intermediate status. Uh, we have some people that love having instructors with them and they'll go a whole season with an instructor with them. And, and, you know, they might, might do 10 different events with an instructor just cause they have that, they want to be more comfortable. They want, you know, more experience. They want to learn and learn and learn. So everybody's a little different, you know, everybody's skill sets, sets different. Some people come from, you know, the streets and back roads, autocross, go-kart, motocross, you know, everybody comes from a different drag racing. Everybody comes from a different background. Um, and it's just how fast do their skills kind of adapt to what we're doing specifically on the road course. And there'll be a lot of times, even me as an instructor, I'll get another instructor. Mm -hmm. I'll tell Rick, Hey, jump in my car. I'm, I'm hitting this corner this way. And I just don't feel like it's the fastest. I want your opinion. It's all about learning. Yeah. It's in it, helping each other again, helping each other to get faster. Yeah, I, I wouldn't every, mind having one of you guys hop in my car and. Yeah, we'll do it, and we can drive. One of the things we can do is, you know, if you bring your car and you're like, "Hey, man, I, I want you to feel my car. I don't know if I have the suspension set up right. You know, I, I I've been playing with my shocks and I've been playing with the coilovers or sway bars and you know or tire pressures, or whatever you're working on, right? And you know, or I got a different compound for my my brakes. I don't know. You know, if it's really doing what I want it to do, I think I know, but let, let me see. And we can jump in the cars and go, oh, you know what? Tighten that up or change this up a little bit or add a little air, put more air in your tire, less air in your tire. There's a whole bunch of things that dial in cars that, uh -huh. you know, we'll teach. We yeah. teach the dynamics. So a lot of people show up and they don't know, you know, again, they want all the parts. You don't need all the parts. But if you get faster and faster and faster and you want some parts, we'll talk about it. Hey, I want to get a sway bar. Well, why do you want a sway bar? Well, because my buddy got one. Well, why do you why, why do you, you want know, one? Why don't you do? You know what a sway bar does. Right. The purpose of a sway bar. Mm -hmm. and that's right. the way the way I built my cars. Yeah. It was everything was one piece at a time over the course of three years. Yeah. It was. It wasn't. I didn't go throw everything at it. I threw something at it. Went and learned how to drive it. Yep. Threw something at it. Went and learned how to drive it. Because every time you, you make a major change like that, you almost have to relearn how to drive the car. Absolutely. You know, there's no better way to relearn how to drive the car than on a racetrack. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So the season opener is April 13th on Saturday at Mid Ohio and Lexington, Lexington, Ohio. Do you guys want to talk talk about that a little bit? So the auto interest season opener uh, is at Mid Ohio in Lexington, Ohio, April 12th, 13th, 14th. Yep. Uh, the Spec Panther season opener is actually going to be the weekend of Memorial Day, and that is going to be a Gingerman race course up in Michigan. And that's in so, May, right? say, say that again? That's in uh, the month of May. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. That'll be towards the end of May. So, um, But auto interest season opener uh, is April 12th, 13th, 14th of Mid-Ohio. And uh, April, Saturday, April 13th, we're going to be doing a Panther car show. So we wanted to try to get as many Panthers involved 
Uh, come out, see what Spec Panther is all about. Uh, we're going to have every person that comes is going to get a discount coupon from some racing equipment just for attending the show. Um, we're going to have our car control course is going to be open uh, from 1 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So the guys that, that come and want to jump in their car and kind of experience what it's like to go around a little autocross type course, um, they can do that. And we're also going to have quite a few Spec Panthers there uh, to be able to give people rides out on the track as a passenger. Now, you will need, if you have a helmet, that's great. It has to be an automotive helmet. It can't be a motorcycle helmet. It does need to be uh, Snell 2015 or above. Um, and you are going to have to wear long pants. Okay, so no shorts. When we go out on track again, we try to gear things towards safety. Um, if you don't have helmets, Auto Interest does have helmet rentals available. Um, and there is a small cost as a passenger. So you, have, you have to purchase an armband, which is $15. Um, and then we'll take you out as many times as you want to around the course in our Spec Panthers just to kind of give you an idea of what it's like to be out there. And that's also the same the same day as the HPDE event. Yes, it Which is, is. A Saturday yep. also. Yep. Yes, yeah, so you'll get to kind of see all different cars out on track, running around. Um, if you're there in the mornings, you'll actually kind of get to see these these first time and novice students and what we teach them in our car control class on, you know, kind of getting that car to, to go a little sideways to where they feel what it feels like when that car starts to come out from underneath of them and they can overcorrect. It's, it's a fun little course. They call it hammerhead. It's, it's a great time. And, and then usually lunchtime or after lunch, all the, the guys with their spec Panthers, we go up there and just beat the crap out of, uh, our own Panthers, you know, in that. So, yeah. That's cool. So we're gonna, we're gonna have those events, and then at four o'clock, we're gonna be handing out trophies uh, for the Panther Car Show. Um, we're, we're we're again working with Summit Racing on some swag bags to give away along with the trophies, but we are actually gonna have physical trophies that we're gonna give out for first, second, and third. So anybody who wants to show up, the Panther, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Panther Car Show is going to start at 10 a.m. So um, there'll be guys that will direct. We're going to be in a parking lot right next to the Turn 1 pavil Pavilion uh, to where you kind of see all the action on the track, get your cars ready for the actual show itself, and uh, walk around and check things out. They'll I think they have food vendors there, don't they, Rick? Yeah, normally. First one of the year, they normally do. Every other event they do, yeah. so I would assume so. So we should have food vendors there to be able to, if you don't want to go somewhere to get lunch, you can eat lunch right there at the track. Um, there is fuel available at the track for anybody that wants to mess around and they start getting low in fuel, they can purchase right from the track. It's expensive, yeah. though. Yeah. Go get regular glass. A little pricey. <laughs> Go get regular <laughs> gas. There's a gas station. There's food. It's, it's right outside of a town. So there's within five minutes, there's gas, food, food coffee, drinks, whatever. Yeah, so, Rob, you'll be taking a drive away from Queens? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be driving. Driving. I'll be coming. Driving on uh, Friday. I'll be driving all day Friday. Get how there, long is that, be at, how long be at the track. Is that Eleven hours. It's um, for me, it's uh ten. I think it's ten hours or eight, eight and a half hours actually. Yeah, I think it's like. No, it's not hours. bad. Not not bad at all. No. Yeah. Have you already? You got a hotel room in Lexington, Rob? Not yet. I didn't get anything yet. Okay. But I I, I don't mind staying. You know, a little further. At, you know, thirty minutes outside. You know. To, to, to get something for a little more uh, a little bit of a better price that's what I usually do yeah so there's a there's a town that's fairly close to Lexington it's Mansfield um, you could look into Mansfield Ohio and maybe find a hotel in that area you're probably 10 minutes from 
detract from Mansfield. All right. Yeah. So and there's no premium. Out. They're not gonna mark up prices because there's something going on at Mid Ohio. It's not yeah. like a NASCAR. NASCAR was there, maybe. Yeah. You know, when I when I go to NASCAR race, I stay like I stay in the yeah. next town over two two or three towns yeah. over. 30, mm-hmm. 40 miles and pay normal prices. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Took me to my first NASCAR race back in April, and we stayed what about an hour or two hours away from Richmond. Uh, Richmond. Yeah, about it. They're actually racing in Richmond right now as we speak. Crazy. You know, yeah, but yeah, they're that was, that was an experience. Richmond's a fun track. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, the cool yeah. thing with this is, you know, getting people involved not only in Spec Panther, but even when you're doing auto interest events. I mean, going to Michigan, going to You know, there's a pretty historical track that we go to here in Ohio called Nelson Ledges, and it's actually the fastest track in the United States. You carry a higher average speed at Nelson Ledges than you do at any other track in the United States. Um, And the track was, I think, built in the 60s. So it's been around for a long time. You know, we get to go to pit race. That's part of the fun of getting involved in this is, kind of get to, to go to all these different tracks around the United States. And a lot of these tracks will have companies that they'll deal with um, for track day events. So mm-hmm. again, one of probably my coolest experiences was having Rick go with me to Charlotte Motor Speedway and actually running the, the Roval at Charlotte, which I had never been on a bank track before. And that's a whole experience in itself being on those banked ovals yeah but that's part of the fun of it you know and these panthers are definitely capable of being able to do it these cars are pretty much built for anything um they're like giant miatas yeah doing this stuff to completely modify these cars can do anything you got the short arm long arm control arm set up coil over running right through the center of everything it's just it's the op it, it, if, you, if you look at the front end of these of these new cup cars in nascar it's pretty similar mm-hmm. i know they have the independent rear system. i don't that's that's something that would be interesting to see a panther with irs mm. yeah that, it could be would, done be but i don't know if it's worth the effort but it can be it, done it can be done <laughs> Yeah, well, Homework's car is pretty impressive. I think you guys really like that car we see in person. That car is something else. That's cool. I'm excited yeah, that's cool. to see it. That's for sure. These horses are going to be really exciting. Um, so, at the end of May, do you guys have a specific date for that yet? Uh, yeah. Here, let me... Up. So the first race is actually going to be May 26th at Gingerman Race. We actually have a full schedule. Uh, we're going to have a total of five races this season. Um, so May 26th at Gingerman, Sunday, June 9th at Nelson Ledges, uh, Sunday, August 18th at Nelson Ledges, uh, Sunday, September the 1st at Pitt Race in Pittsburgh, and then we'll, our final race will be Monday, September the 9th at Mid-Ohio again. Mm-hmm. Pretty nice spread out schedule. Yeah. Not too, yeah. Not too, not too on top of each other. Typically take the month of July off just because it's so hot. And, and you know, when we get into Spec Panther and you start looking at the rules, you're going to see where, you know, we require everybody to wear a racing suit. Um, again, we're gearing this around being as safe as possible. So shoes, gloves, suit, all have to be FIA certified. Um, helmets, again, uh, 2015 and above. Uh, automotive helmets, no yeah. motorcycle helmets. Yeah. We I typically purchased the helmet about six months ago, uh, 2020 Snell. Yeah, that's good. That'll work. But the suits are pretty simple. I mean, Summit Racing has suits are super cheap, like, I don't know, 100, 200 bucks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's all just to be safe. You know, people, that that's probably the most important thing where the track is, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, I drive, you know, do this, do that, whatever. But, man, we just, we just want you to be safe. We just have a good time, be safe, you know, 
the regular HPDE program, the high performance driver education program, you don't need race suits and all that stuff. You need helmet, long pants, closed toed shoes. That's, that's what really what you need. Um, I would always suggest wearing, you know, something long sleeve. I don't really like when people wear like spandexy or like stuff that can kind of melt just, you know, wear cotton, real, real, wear real fiber, like, you know, cotton, hundred yeah. percent cotton stuff, or whatever, wear your jeans, you know, it's just, it's just a one more little safety tip. You know, if, if, if for some reason something catches on fire, you want to have, you know, th- you don't want to have stuff that's going to melt and, and catch on fire. You just want to, you know, exit the car and, you know, the safety crews will come extinguish it and whatever rarely happens, there, but there has happen. to be um, a fire extinguisher has to be mounted in the car for us for tech, right? No, so no, regular not program. No, okay. Yeah. We it's recommend it. Mm-hmm. We recommend it, of course. but you don't have to have it. Okay. Yeah. Well, Again, the whole idea is let's be as safe as we possibly can. So it's not something that you have to have in the vehicle, but we highly recommend that you bring it. Mm-hmm. If you need one, Rob, I actually have one in my trunk. I don't know why I have one, but I do. So. Yeah, I, I got I got one too. I just have to uh, figure out a way to. I'm not running a back seat, so I can mount it up back there somewhere. Yeah, easy. Do you have? Yep. I pulled the back uh, seat out. Do you have a harness bar or anything to where you're running harnesses in your car? No, no. I'm running just the uh, the driver's seat is a Marauder seat, so it has a little extra bolstering to hold to hold you in, but no no harness bar, no nothing because I I drive the car all over the country. It's more of a comfort, more of a a grand grand to pro touring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really set the car up to do one thing excellent but be able to do multiple different things pretty well you know to be able to go on a long road trip with reliability somewhat decent fuel mileage of 21 miles to the gallon and comfort be able to pull over and lay back and take a nap in the car and cruise yeah. around at, at, cruise around at nice low speeds and then when she's ready to go open her up and just drive it like i stole it <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I love of it. It's multiple personalities. Mm-hmm. So was your car a P71 to start out with? No. Oh, it's actually a 03 Grand Marquis oh. LS. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Marauder front end, a Crown Vic. It's Marauder in the front, Crown Vic in the rear, and Grand Marquis in the middle. There you go. It still has the chrome on the door trims. <laughs> That's cool. And it's got the uh, Shelby GT500 wheels. Yeah, that car is really special. Cool. Mm-hmm. He won the uh, burnout competition at Ford Nationals the past two years in a row. Yeah, yeah that's the easy. That's the easy oh. stuff, though. Mm-hmm. Oh man, <laughs> that's the easy stuff. That's crazy. I always say that. That's all those burnouts and donuts. That stuff is easy. Yeah. Drive your car at speed, at the you know, on 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 its limits without without wrecking it, and then then we'll yeah. talk. To drive it technical. I always driving refer to as, yep. yeah, driving yep. technical. I mean, even sometimes when I do the skills, I might be going slow, but it's extremely technical. Like I want to pres- drive, yep. you know, precision driving. I want to aim for a mark. And sometimes I'll set up goofy courses where I'll really challenge myself to, okay, make the car do this. Like looks real hard, looks almost impossible to kind of get it sideways through there or to thread that needle or do that slalom in that manner. But that's, I mean, if you don't challenge yourself and, and try, you can make mistakes, but if you can try to yeah. to push your loan limits, you're going to get better and better and better. So They always say, you know, look where you want the car to go. Yeah. And it usually works. It, it, it does usually work. work. It does work. Nine out of ten yep. times, it will work. Yep. 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 That's one of the things you'll learn in classroom, um, you know, is just there's so many tips that we can't give it to you all in just, you know, yeah. an hour worth of classroom it's it's so much you know just we have so much knowledge just the more people talk even you know not in classroom you just talk to people you're going to pick up so much stuff just being around real track people you know when people are at the track they just share knowledge you know you can you can go up to the guy in any other car doesn't matter that you drive the crown vic they're gonna they're gonna respond to you talk to you, you could be a honda civic to the complete polar opposite of what a panther is and that guy's going to give you some information that you might be able to take back and go, man, that, that was a good tip. I'm going to try that. I'm going to, I'm going to do that thing or, you know, whatever. And, and you'll learn something from people you would never expect to learn stuff from. 
But um, I'm I have to be up super early for work, so I'm going to sign out. And uh, G is going. G is going to come in and finish the last 15, 20 minutes. Cool. I guess, Rob, um, can't wait to meet you at Mid Ohio. You yep. too. Same here. We'll have some, same we'll have some fun, buddy. To it. Looking forward to it. I've been I've been I spent the whole day getting the car ready. I ordered <laughs> tires yesterday, and uh, yeah, I'm, awesome. I'm ready. To we're go. really looking forward to it. I have two. Yep. Two That's sets of the SVT we SVT wheels, so I get one set to drive there with, one set to put the track tires on, and try to keep them dedicated to the track, so I don't need to keep buying tires every time one of these events pops up. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, guys. Yeah. Awesome meeting you guys, Derek. Have a good night, everyone that that uh, came into view tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, well, I'll text you tomorrow. I'll text you. Tomorrow, All right, so. brother. All right, man. All right, good night, See guys. See ya. See ya. Peace. I'm gonna invite G. So one other thing to add, and and for those that are watching right now, if you go into uh, past episodes of Power Block TV, there's a show called Carcass, and I think it was was it two seasons ago that they built that, Rick? Mm, yeah, I believe so. So two that was, seasons uh... ago, the the show Carcass actually built a Spec Panther in our series and one of our our students ended up buying the car we're hoping that that car is going to be at mid ohio uh, so it's kind of another little draw that you know we got a tv car that's going to be there so it should be kind of cool yeah, yeah. Well, i still haven't gotten the opportunity to watch it i have to watch it tonight it's super fun fun man it's it's that's a lot of fun. those guys did a great job it's they had a lot of fun at the so it was a good time. Well, and I, I reached out to both of the hosts and uh, kind of said, "Hey, you know, maybe maybe we could get you guys to come back out to one of our races." And they both responded that they're waiting for my phone call. So mm -hmm. uh, I think they're they they would be excited to come back out to one of our events and and uh, jump in the car for old times' sake. Let's put it that way. What's up, G? How's it going, guys? Good. How about you? I'm good, man. Hey, um, before we get into anything, I have you guys ever reached out to like Red Bull or anybody? Nope. Uh, should hit them up because even a lot of times they might just come out and bring a bunch of drinks and stuff. Um, Monster Energy, Red Bull. A lot of times they'll have people in different cities that are um that do promotions so if you let them know about it they might come through you might be able to get some sponsorship or at least maybe they'll come through and bring a bunch of drinks and stuff for everybody yeah, that's, that's great cool. idea that's awesome I'll, um, I'll try to find out if i can find somebody to tie you in with with that because it, it was something that hit me right before we got on the call cool so um so i guess I know you guys talked about the tracks. I was listening in. Um, so the team aspect of things, how many people are on the team? So we can have, we, we, we try to keep it limited to three to four people at the most. Um, typically, our teams are two drivers mm -hmm. or less. Um, we do have one team this year that has three guys on the team. Uh, but typically most of our teams are all two driver teams. And the idea of that, again, when we talked about those data acquisition devices that we have in the vehicles, we're sharing that data between the drivers that, you know, if one driver may be faster in one section than another driver, they can kind of look over that data and share it between them. And then when we're off track, Again, all the teams kind of get together, and, and if, if there's a slower team, we'll share that information with them as well. So, Yeah, it's, that's definitely a cool thing. Um, do you want to go over real quick? I know we talked when we had the other call, like, about basically the modifications that are done to your cars and that are allowed. So the only modifications we really want to see done to these cars is brake pads and tires and exhaust i mean typically 
like I'll tell you with my car, I kind of went over the car a little bit over the winter that the transmission came out of the car. I put new clutches and steel discs, but they are stock style clutches and discs in the car, a little bit thicker steel discs than what the, the stock are. And then my car was a detective car. So it had an open differential with 327 ring and pinion. So I was able to find a positive traction carrier and I put 355s because though you could get a Crown Vic with a 355 gear. Um, I tried to keep the car to that spec series. You know, I don't, I don't, Rick and I had talked about because the, the way that the rules kind of read, um, thought about doing 373s in the rear end um, because Mustang technically had a 373 carrier set up for an 88 rear end. And uh, we, we kind of discussed the idea that we thought that that was going away from the spec side of things. Again, we want to try to keep these cars inexpensive. We want to keep them what they are, improve how good these cars really are just on their own. Yeah, I think it's mostly seat time. I mean, mine still has a stock exhaust on it. You know, the, I have the different gear ratio of the lower or the we'll call it the worst gear ratio, but it, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's just seat time. I mean, you could throw me in any one open diff, you know, high miles, anything, give me a set of brake pads, give me a set of tires and we're going to go have fun. Like it's, it's, it's going to be fast. And the reason it's going to be fast is because I have, you know, thousands of laps around road courses and the driver's going to make that car. It's going to make up for a gear ratio or it's going to make up for somebody's got, you know 50 more horsepower or 100 more horsepower um that's the the great thing about the road course itself is the more you work on yourself the less you really have to work on your car you just you're gonna learn so much and you're gonna set personal best every time you go to the track and you're like oh I, I i did better oh i did better i did better i did better and i think that's the appeal and that's why people get hooked is just because they're constantly setting their own personal best with the same equipment and they just keep getting better and better. And then if you want to modify some stuff, go ahead and modify some stuff. But if you don't have the budget for that, it doesn't matter. Just go out and have fun and set your personal best and, and, and go from there. Yeah. Um, so one question just based off that, I know, um, what do you guys do with, as far as tires that you guys are running? So we run up to a 275 in width. And most of the guys run 18s, but you can run a 17 or a 19. It doesn't matter. 275, 200 tread wear. So you can run any 200 tread wear tire you want. Um, most of us stick with the more inexpensive 200 tread wear tires uh, just because they wear a little longer. Um, you know, and, and, and again, it's the driver. You know, somebody can have the stickiest tire out there, but they don't know how to use it yet. It doesn't really matter. You know, you got to learn. And honestly, for the novices, I tell everybody, your first several times at the track bring the crappiest all season yes. junk tire you can bring because you want to slide around a little bit you want to lose a little bit of control so you know what to do uh in order to correct it if you just have a slick on the whole time you're just gonna point shoot drive around the track and you're never gonna learn anything so we kind of tell people on your first couple of times just just bring normal stuff you know don't don't try to soup up your car and put on all these performance items, just bring the car, have fun, learn. You're going to see other cars. And, and we have, you know, one guy that bought a bunch, you know, bought some stuff for his car and he started showing up to spec Panther stuff. And he's like, Oh, I think I bought the wrong stuff. Yeah. You, you could have saved yourself some money. You could have, you know, you could have just plugged in and learned and talked to some guys first, but he thought, you know, he, he saw the, the, the series and the, and the rules and, and never reached out and just kind of built it on his own. And then he came and he's like, man, I, I picked some of the wrong stuff. These tires aren't that great. I thought they were great. The internet said they were great, but they're not that great. And so, and he was an experienced driver. He just, just, you know, we, we want people to, we want to be budget friendly. We want people to have a great time, be safe and, and be budget friendly. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I mean, it's cool that, um, you know, you guys have the experience that you can teach people and tell them and help them 
you know, start, you know, like you said, don't go buy, grab a bunch of stuff, like yeah. get out there and try it. And, and so. That's my favorite thing. I, I like, I mean, I like building cars, like racing cars, but my favorite thing is making other people fast. So last year I was taking the people, we kind of have, we'll say three groups of people. We have the fastest guys in Spec Panther that are all pretty close, the middle guys that are all pretty close, and then the people at the end that are all pretty close. So the guys at the top just fight against each other. The guys in the middle all want to beat each other because they know their group. We know that this guy's almost as fast as this guy, and I beat this guy last time. And then the guys at the bottom, they still battling. You know, they're they're still I'm gonna get in front of you this time, and I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you. You beat me last time, or whatever. It's just about fun. You kind of race you, you race yourself, but you're kind of racing the people that are around you. You know, you you kind of if you know how fast you are and you're trying to set your personal best. If you set your personal best, but you still don't beat the other person, you're still ecstatic. You're still so happy because you ran the fastest you've ever run. Even though that guy ran a little faster, doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't take anything away from you. It's, it, it, you know, it's, it's a real interesting concept or, or just an interesting feeling when, when, even though you didn't win, doesn't, doesn't matter at all. Yeah. You're racing yourself basically. Yep. And, um, for anybody that just chimed in, you can check out. There's a bunch of videos on Spec Panther on their Instagram. Um, there's a lot of definitely see cars being pushed well to their limits <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> it, it's you know, Spec Panther is actually auto interest and Spec Panther is just like what you guys have tried to develop. It's that family. You know, mm -hmm. we're all about trying to make each other better you know and help each other out so um it's just another avenue some people are going to have the interest and some people aren't but that's why we kind of wanted to do the panther car shows because we know that there's going to be some people that really don't have the interest to go out and and go on track but yet they're they're proud of what they have and they want to come out and be part of the car show so we're kind of opening that avenue up for for some of those other people that may necessarily not want to go out on track. It's again, part of being that family, you know? Yeah. It's a, it's a community. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we're all driving the same, it's all the same body. Yeah. Yeah. If people have questions, by the way, they can reach out. I know there's a bunch of questions in the chat and I, I can't keep up with all of them, but if, if they want to send us messages, we can answer some of those things. Yeah, I think some of those questions are more modified based on like, building it. I took some screenshots so I can send them or, or post them. Yep, you know? yep. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, you guys can definitely hit you guys up. It, um, and just because, uh, let's pretend, you know, like Rob, they, they have a modified car. Doesn't matter. Or G, you got a, you got a stick shift car, right, G? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. bring it. Have fun. Doesn't matter if you can't compete in Spec Panther itself. Have fun. Learn. Get fast. Bring some more friends with modified cars and we'll just do the unlimited program. You know what I mean? We'll just, you know, the more that people come out, hang out, support, get on track, learn, we're going to create, you know, we'll create the opportunity for you to, to compete and have fun and whatever. But yeah. throughout the process, just learn, learn, support, show up. I, I wish I had a garage and was closer that I could just buy another Panther and just run it stock with you guys. <laughs> Look, I got Keep space. This for what I, <laughs> I got space. If you want, I got a, I got a parking lane. Park at the parking lot. No problem. We got. <laughs> I, we tell people all the time, like you know, I've had a couple of them stay there, stay overnight, stay for a couple weeks, whatever. Um, guys in transit or whatever, and uh, you know, we we hear that a lot. To be honest, we hear a lot of people because they're look, they are expensive in some places, but you can still find cheap ones, especially if you want to do a little work. You know. Some guys like, hey, it's not running right. Something's gone. It's probably a coil pack or something. Or, hey, I'm going to sell this thing super cheap, and it's got a slip and tranny. We've got a guy that, you know, rebuilds trannies for, like, 700 bucks. Like, just the, – the, you can do Panther cheap, and especially if you get a partner. So, like, like Holly said, most of us have a partner. So, if you split the cost of the car and the parts and the, and the whatever, it's, it's even cheaper. So – if I can, if I can make it out, man, I want to, I want to have a, I want to go for a lap with you and your car driving it, and then um, I'll let you go take this out and, and see, yep. have fun with it, be, you know. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. I'd it's good time. Definitely love to see the difference between the automatic versus the stick shift. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm running. Um, yeah, I'm running three seventy threes. Actually, um, the the twenty first uh, in April, we got Pierre uh, Luke from Canada, who was kind of like the five speed, one of the kind of innovators with these. He did a lot of pedal kits. He's going to be a guest on here, and um, I I followed his advice and went three seventy threes because my car had three twenty sevens, um, with the TR thirty six fifty. So it's a lot of fun. It's a different, whole different animal now. Oh, I'll bet. I'll but, bet. You know, so, well, one of the other, you know, I seriously looked at doing 373s in mine, but again, looking at some of the data in some of the straightaways on on a few of the courses, it I kind of felt like maybe it would add another shift point, which every time you're shifting that car, you're losing a little bit of time. And because this is a time-based event, um, you know, I'd, I'd rather be maxed out in that straightaway than going through a shift point and then trying to downshift and, and losing those times. So, um, you know, that was, that was kind of a decision on my end. Plus I knew with, with the way that the Panther platforms were the biggest gear that you could get in that car was 355. So I kind of yeah. wanted to be true to that. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. So that's why, like I said, it'll be cool to get you guys yeah, input of, uh, let you guys take the car out with the the five speed and the three seventy threes and see what it compares to with what you guys are running. Because I mean, you guys are doing your road course and you're pushing the car well beyond limits that I'm pushing on the street. Yeah, um, we'll run, run data. We'll just compare the data. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something we follow up with. We'll just run the graphs and you can see, you know, you can see if if this is you know somebody's acceleration curve and through the corner and you'll see an automatic one and we'll just see how they compare. It'll be interesting to see how the data matches up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. You guys have all the data and you guys share it with people. That's, you know, that's a big thing. So, mm -hmm. so I came, I came from a BMX background and I did a lot, I taught a lot of clinics and everything. And, you know, it is, it's about helping people get faster and, and, and more confident and, you know, just kind of growing the community and growing, you know, growing all this. So. And so what's really cool about with what you guys are doing and now with the car show and everything. And, you know, if there's some stuff I can try to help out with, you know, Derek will let you know. I definitely will try to, because it's a cool thing you guys are doing. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, we appreciate your guys' help on on this platform here. I mean, this is huge for us to help get the word out about Spec Panther and, and try to get, you know, for those that are interested in, and want to get involved in this, you know, that's that's a huge help for us, too. Yeah, and then, definitely. Like I said, if you guys get some flyers, we'll get them out at Carlisle because um, that's going to be big. The Ford Nationals would love if we could get one of you guys out there with one of the car, one of the spec cars in the field. We'll see how things go. It's it's been pretty busy, but uh, you know maybe maybe we can make a trek out there. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe we will get some competition. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be in Pittsburgh. I don't know if you caught that on um, September 1st. The what? September 1st, they're actually going to be in, uh, in Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Yeah, so maybe we can we can definitely hit that up. And um, their actual season opener is on the 26th in Michigan of May. Yeah, so I've heard about that. Yeah. National, yeah. yeah, Pittsburgh's like probably seven, seven and a half hours from here. That's a fantastic facility. Uh, That's such a nice track. The facility is nice. The track is nice. It's clean. It's is, open. Is, it's it's so cool. Pit Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh International. International Raceway. Nice. So what is, um, for? I guess my question for each of you guys would be, uh, which course is your favorite for each one of you guys? And why? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Man, I don't know. Pittsburgh's, they're all different. I like certain things about all the tracks. To be honest, every track I could probably pick out a corner that I really like or some aspect. I mean, the ones that we frequent the most, besides, you know, Nelson's Ledges, Mid Ohio, or Pittsburgh, probably Pittsburgh. It's big, it's long, it's fast, it's technical. I mean, Mid Ohio's fun it's it's a you know world-renowned track everybody not everybody but you know what i mean it's one of those tracks that you know big time race organizations have been there um 
you know, so it, it, it's kind of cool. And then Holly mentioned earlier, Nelson's Ledges is, you know, kind of the fastest track in the U.S. as far as average speed. I think I hit the brakes like four times there in that whole track. The rest mm-hmm. of it's big sweepers and big, big, you know, you're just on the throttle a lot on that track. And it's, it's really fun. So I don't know if I had to pick probably Pittsburgh. What about you, Holly? Uh, I mean, out of all the tracks, it, again, it's hard for me to pick two. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of Nelson Legends. I mean, we mm-hmm. have some of our teams find it boring because it's it's a shorter track. It's very repetitious. It's there's there's not a whole lot of you know technical side to the track, um, but it's simple. It's 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 pretty easy to learn. There isn't that many corners. I. I for the tracks that we go to, Nelson Ledges, but all over, out of every track that I've ever been to, Charlotte has definitely been my favorite, mm-hmm. for sure. If I ever get mm-hmm. the opportunity to go back and do the Charlotte Roval, I will do it in a heartbeat. What were you, what were you driving with at Charlotte? <laughs> uh, 2004 Corvette Z06 that I had... Uh, <laughs> Rick actually helped me build the car to compete in Optima Search for the Ultimate Streetcar. Um, that it was over the top. It was Viking coilovers, Van Steel sway bars, Willwood brakes. I mean, I had a fortune invested in the car, and and I had a lot of fun with the car. But like I said, we were talking earlier. Rick kind of talked me into. To, hey, you need to buy a Panther, and I bought a Panther and started playing with it. I had more fun in the Panther than I did in the Corvette. And it was like, <laughs> you know what? I've got all this money invested in this Corvette that if something happens, that's a lot of money down the drain. And, you know, I have very minimal money invested in this Panther, and I have as much fun, if not more, in that car than, than I do the Corvette. So I got rid of the Corvette, and now I've got the Panther. You know, it's, it's a riot. Yep. I can, I can, I mean, I, I shared earlier that my Corvette hasn't seen the track in like five years and I've set a ton of records with it. I set a bunch of land speed records with it over 200 miles an hour. And the Panther's still my choice to go to the track that my, my Corvette just sits on the rack and uh, someday I'll bring it back out and have some fun, but the Panther's just more fun. It's cheaper. It's and it's, we just laugh. I mean, I don't laugh. I don't think I've ever laughed inside my Corvette ever, mm. like driving it. <laughs> I I can't stop laughing inside the Panther. Mm-hmm. Like we just have a blast. Yeah, they're they're fun. I mean, they're it's just I mean it's a big boat, but it's fun when you get it moving and push mm-hmm. it. It's it you know it's just a lot of fun. So one thing you guys got to do for me because I I don't think I can make it out unfortunately with my work schedule, but. You should get Derek and take him for a lap, put a GoPro on him <laughs> because him driving, <laughs> you guys are probably going to scare the hell out of him. It'll be funny to watch. That probably would be scary the way I drive. I drive, I drive like a grandpa, so it's kind of appropriate that I'm in the Panther. So yeah. I see what you guys would be crazy. I'd be surprised if Derek ever broke 80 miles an hour in his car yet. So. Yeah. I haven't even hit, I don't think I've hit 80 in this car, actually. I think 70 one day. I tried to hit 100, but I couldn't. I, I'm probably in that same boat on the streets with my Panther. I don't think I've ever gone that fast on the streets. On the track, totally different. But I don't think I've ever really gone that fast on the streets either, now that yeah. I think about it. I'm not a fan. When we go to the meets and I try to keep up with everyone and just being behind, send me the address. I'll be mm-hmm. <laughs> The yeah, fun I mean, part with Mid Ohio isn't so much the. I mean, we there's some pretty long straightaways you can get the car up there, but it's it's all the elevation changes and and the turns within the elevation changes that I think is so much fun with the car. You know, I agree. Uh, the G forces from side to side, but while you're going up and down same time, it's it's a real interesting feeling. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, you guys got to get Derek in there. It'll be <laughs> go we'll, for a we'll long. Get, 
We'll get a camera on him. No problem. I, I like that idea. Should I, should I put a little waste basket in the car, too? You might need to do that, yeah. Hey, Derek, no eating burgers or anything before the ride. <laughs> Listen, I think Rick and I both have had people that we've taken uh, for rides in the cars that, like, literally pull into the pits and the people throw the door out and go running over to the trash can. <laughs> so, yeah, it's we won't hurt you too bad. Yeah, some I didn't think about because I eat a lot, especially when I take those road trips for painter events. I eat a lot of food, buddy. So. Just wait till afterwards. Yeah. You eat a lot of food when you're done going for rides. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I think when we had that other call, I told you guys I had done um at Pocono. I did like the NASCAR thing. We did it was a thing with Pocono Raceway, so they did an extended course. It was a promotion thing we were doing, so they ran us through, and it was like, man, at the end of the day driving one of those cars it was like i was exhausted i didn't even want to drive back from pocono to philly mm -hmm. like i was just so tired and like people don't realize like how much adrenaline energy that you put out and i mean i can't even imagine running a panther for a few laps like all out like um you know it's you know street stuff i do back roads like when nobody's around that's one thing but like being on a course and pushing it, like it's definitely, I know it's got to be a workout. <laughs> I sleep, sleep. It is. on those nights when I'm at the track. We, I sleep. I mean, when I hit that bed, I'm out. I'm done. Yeah, it's it's mentally and physically exhausting. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you're you're fighting that car around that track a little bit, but then the focus that you have, because there's a lot of people don't realize how much you know it isn't just about watching the track it's about watching the corner workers and the flags and the cars that are around you and and we typically teach a, a figure eight between the driver's mirror up to the rear view mirror over to the passenger mirror and, and back around to constantly be aware of your surroundings people that are around you um it's it's mentally and physically exhausting for sure. Mm -hmm. One thing too, I don't know if you guys have ever dealt with. Have you guys dealt with any of the mirror dash cams that you put over your mirror and you can put the the camera on like your I have I have it in my car and I have the the rear camera by my license plate and it gives you a lot more side to side vision behind you than your mirrors do. So that's something sure. you might want to you won't i mean you can have it don't need it um we position the mirrors a little differently than you would on the streets um just so you can kind of see a little bit more of what's going on behind you um and as you're turning i mean we kind of you're going to have that awareness once you learn you'll have that awareness of okay i saw this we'll use a corvette for example because we talked about him like okay i see this guy in the corvette he's two turns behind me but i know he's faster on the straightaway so on the second straightaway he's probably going to be up on my bumper pretty close and you're going to learn all those little judgment calls where okay i'm going to come around this corner a little you know this way or that way and and then he's going to be able to scoot right past me and we're not going to inter interrupt each other's day so it those are all little things that you're going to see you know with experience just you know because on the highway it's a little different you know there's there's you know, thousands of cars and traffic and everything's a little different. There's side streets and, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. At the racetrack, everybody's going the same direction. The guy behind you is going to be the guy behind you no matter what, you know, and you know the next turn, you know what's going, the course is the same every time. So you kind of get a feel for, okay, I know what's going on behind me. So you don't have, it's not like you're going to have 20 cars stacked up behind you all at the same time. Yeah. You're, you're just going to know what's kind of going on. And like you said, that's like something that you only learn with more track time and experience. For sure. More track sure. time. Yep. Do you have any more questions, dude? Um, in regards to. Um, if people want to register for the show, uh, where do they need to go for that? So th there's no registration. The show is 100% free. Uh, Again, it, it's Lexington, Ohio at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. That's going to be Saturday, April the 13th. Um, 
we're going to open up for the car show at 10 a.m. Uh, you're going to be parked at the Turn 1 Pavilion parking lot. But there's zero dollars to register for this show. Um, we'd love to see everybody out there that can come out. Uh, every person that comes through for the Panther Car Show is automatically going to get a 10% discount for their next purchase at Summit Racing Equipment. We're putting goodie bags together. Um, there will be first, second, and third place trophies that will be given out at 4 o'clock. Uh, that we're going to have some of our instructors go around and kind of judge the Panthers that are there. <clears throat> we'll have... Uh, one o'clock, we're going to have an open car control area to where the guys that want to get in line and kind of run their Panther around car control will have some other instructors there kind of helping out. That will be available. And then we'll also have a sign-up sheet for anybody who wants to go out on track in a spec Panther. Um, helmets will be required and a wristband will be required for that. Wristbands are going to be $15, and the helmets, I believe, are 25 for rental. If you have your own helmet, feel free to bring it. But again, it does have to be a 2015 or higher certified helmet. So, um, and that's about it. Is that for the car control uh, as well, the helmet? Um, no, car so. control, you're, you're pretty low speed, so we feel pretty safe on that. When we're out in the Spec Panthers as a passenger, we're doing upwards of 100 plus mile an hour. So we want we want that safety aspect for our passengers in that car. And they will have to wear closed-toed to, uh, closed shoes, long pants, and they'll have to have a helmet on. Yeah, you guys can share helmets. You recommend long sleeve too, so... I do. For I think sure. it's just a safety thing. Um, and, and people can share a helmet if, if, you know, there's a group of, you know, five people that show up and they're all, you know, they want to swap helmets, they can, they can swap helmets. It's no big deal. Um, one thing we don't think, I don't think we mentioned is parade laps. Oh. So we do. Oh, yeah, that's right. At lunchtime, so if somebody's interested in driving the track, seeing the track themselves, but they don't want to ride with us uh, in, a, in a, you know, high speed type scenario. They can take their Panther out and drive the track um, at, you know, 50 miles an hour or less. No, no racing, no, no sporty driving, just a visual, you know, opportunity Cruise. to see a real track, at, you know, and, and drive it and say, hey, I drove mid-Ohio, the same, you know, same track that a bunch of famous race car drivers have been on. Yeah, I'm hoping I can make it for that. Um do you guys want to share um, you guys the website and your information if anybody wants to contact you guys? Go ahead, Rick. So Auto Interests um, is the website uh, that the group that we instruct with, the group that puts on Spec Panther. You can also go to specpanther.com. And then my handles for social media are all Rick Hoback, H-O-B-A-C-K. And my handles on social media is hgoddard3 at Instagram and Holly Goddard on Facebook. And you guys have a face, there's a Facebook page as well. Uh, there Spec is, yeah. The Spec Panther Facebook page that we, we post, I try to post almost daily on it just to kind of let everybody know what's, what's happening. Um, in the short future, we're actually going to have a uh, YouTube. Oh, my YouTube. brain. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube <laughs> channel for Spec Panther. Sorry, long day. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll have a we'll have a YouTube channel for Spec Panther that we're basically going to have a half hour television show. We're going to have six episodes. Um, so we'll actually highlight all of the races that we're going to do this season and then have one of the episodes that's going to highlight interviews with our teams that are competing this year. Yeah, I'm sure Derek will po Derek can post all the links um, when he reposts this on YouTube and everything. He'll share all the links. Yeah. So if anybody wants to find out, you know, 
how to get a hold of you guys. We'll have all the links posted. Perfect. So. Cool. It'll be my pleasure. You guys can see I post a lot. Maybe I post, I post a little too much sometimes. It's all good, yeah. man. There's nothing better than me, Panthers. Every day I'm like, all right, I'm not going to post that much today. And then that's when <laughs> I look at the Panthers and say, it's like I'm crazy. I'm like, they have to see this. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You guys definitely got to do the video with Derek, though. That will be, we might have to do like paid views of that or something. Oh, <laughs> got to make sure I don't eat. Hey, we'll just set up an account. Every time somebody makes a donation, I'll just keep them out on track. We'll just we'll just have like a little button that people like do, donate one dollar for a lap, and I'll just keep them in the track for you know, oh, six, six, 60 minutes. Well, if you watch the episode of Carcass, one of the uh, one of the hosts of Carcass was in the back seat of the car, and he was he was getting sick with Rick out on track. He was turning. Yeah, green. All, yeah that's why. I was like, I could, I could only imagine the first time you hit a turn and the look on Derek's face. It's going to be priceless. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Derek, you should go live too. Get a YouTube, like do a do a dash and a GoPro on the dash or something. Yeah. And Derek, you should go live. I need a GoPro because I don't know if I'll be able to hold, hold the phone. The no. I got you covered. I've got. I've got a holder for the cell phone, so we can we can point it at us, and we'll go out there and run one live. That'd yeah. Be cool. <laughs> I'm nervous now. My hands are sweating. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe. Yeah. You'll be fine. That's gonna be crazy. Uh, you might need to get a, like a the airline like the drop down oxygen thing for it. But... <laughs> yeah. If I get sick, gee, you owe me a cheesecake next time I come to Philly. Oh, you know I got you, man. It would just be great because, like, as passionate as you are as of of Panthers, having these guys that know what these cars can do at the limit, it's yeah. going to be fun to watch. Yeah. Oh man, I don't know. I'm ready. You'll be fine. Right, I'm <laughs> take your word for it. I mean, dude, they're yeah, they're I, on they're professionals at it, and they're on a, a road course. Like you'll be good. I can't wait. <laughs> Although, man, I might be a little rusty. You never know. I, first time on track all year. Let's hope. I don't know what's gonna happen. I might be real rusty, dude. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you're gonna have Derek up at night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm probably not gonna sleep the night before. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I probably won't be sleeping the night before. Every oh, every event that we go to, I don't sleep that well. I'm constantly going over the track in my mind over and over and over so again. Is it, is it more excitement for you? Or is it just yeah, like, for sure. Okay. Every time I go, I'm so, so excited. I mean, typically, I don't, I'm not a morning person. I get up every morning about 7 o'clock, but you know track days i'm up at 4 30 and i'm ready to go you know i'm mm. yeah it's it's fun it's, fun it's addicting i can imagine i've actually never been so this is going to be a first time experience for me too so yeah Derek, Derek have you I, ever been to a car it. race i went to nascar with, with rob oh with that's April. right yeah but have I've you ever been to like, we've been to like a road course or anything no, not a drag strip or road course, nothing. Uh, road course is a whole different beast. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait. I've always wanted to, but so I have my I have my heart set on Mid Ohio. We're gonna see. It's probably gonna change my life. It will. I bet. I bet it does. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it will for sure. It's gonna be cool. Well, th thank you guys for the time and everything. Hey, and um, thank, yeah. Thanks for like I said, Derek will, I know Derek will post the links up for anybody that's chiming in or sees this later. Um, you know, it's, I know it's going to be a great time. Hopefully I can make it out. But if I don't, I'll look forward to seeing all the videos of it. Yeah. Cool, man. Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right, guys. We'll take it easy, man. Had a great time. Well. All right, thanks. Oh, and real quick, I mean, on a side note, um, everybody that's chiming in, uh, Marty and Jeff from Mo's Speed Shop. Uh, we are gonna. Derek's gonna have a feature uh, Mondays with Mo's starting uh, in um, May, and uh, 
Marty and Jeff will be answering questions about Panther World and tuning and and everything else. So it's a, a new feature for the magazine and the and the Instagram and everything coming up. So cool. Well, thank you guys for joining. Tonight was great. Okay. All right, guys, take care. Thank you very much. We greatly appreciate no it. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you. In, um, we'll see you shortly. Before we go, one thing you guys could do would be um, maybe do a walk around of one of the cars um, for Derek because he does the YouTube posts and everything. Mm -hmm. And you know, posting on here, you know, he's been posting different people, people's Panthers. Um, so yeah, maybe get one of the cars and do a walk around video about it, and he'll get that up as well. Help spread word. You know, one of the things, Derek, while you're at the track, you could probably do a walk around about like some of the Panthers that are there, and then you know, send them out once a week or whatever if you wanted. Okay, yeah, that'll be you, you do cool. that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, have a yeah. Oh, before yeah. and before. Before we go, one of your members has the car that was on the build. Yeah, carcass. carcass. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're hoping that we're going to have the car there. It's it's being some maintenance being done to it, and uh, um, we think we're going to have the car there. But uh, yeah, we'll just kind of have to wait and see. So, but we're hoping it's going to be there. For sure. Yep. And then later in the season, I was kind of telling these guys I had reached out to the hosts of Carcass and kind of egged them on of, you know, maybe they need to come out to another Spec Panther event and run the car. And um, I think they're waiting for a phone call from us. So they they were they were game to come out and jump in it for old time's sake. Nice. Definitely. Yep. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thanks everybody that chimed in, and uh, you know, Derek. Derek's always got more stuff coming. So, awesome. I try to man. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. All right, man. We'll see you. Thanks, guys. Man. Thanks, guys. Bye.